There's a couple tricky questions on that, so make sure you understand. I'll probably do another example in a video to follow this chapter that you guys can look at. So these are how you voluntarily convey property. It's done by a grantor and a grantee. They use this deed mechanism and they do it voluntarily. Property can transfer involuntarily as well. It can transfer involuntarily. This is where it happens to you. And there are four major ways to transfer the property involuntarily. This, there's no deed required on this, nothing. So the first one, if you look at that chart on the top of page 93, will tell you there are four methods. We have talked about one already. It is when the local government takes your property because you died without a will or any heirs to the property be left to. The state will involuntarily take your property through a process called escheat. Escheat, remember, was one of the governmental powers we talked about. The police powers, eminent domain, taxation, and escheat. They've escheated you out of it. That is the local government taking it from you. Your land can also be taken through eminent domain involuntarily. That was another one of the police powers. The right of eminent domain is for the government to take your property for the betterment of the public. Like for the a highway I-69, that has gone from Indianapolis all the way to Evansville. They just went through and took people's property. Now they compensated it for it, but it was an involuntary conveyance. The people said, hey, I don't want to give up my property. The state said, too damn bad, we're taking it. The third way to lose your property involuntarily is through a process called foreclosure. Foreclosure is when a secured creditor takes your property for a non-payment, like your mortgage company. You promise to pay them monthly that $550, $550 a month, and then you used your house as the collateral for the loan, and when you fail to make the payment, the bank takes the collateral through a court process called foreclosure. Realize that anybody that has a secured credit can literally foreclose on your property in theory. Typically, you see it the first lien position, and we will talk about it in the financing chapter, but it could be the second lien it could be a medical lien, a mechanics lien, could be your real estate taxes. All of those are secured creditors. They can take it through foreclosure. The last one is the one that everybody wants to argue about or enjoy, is another private individual can take your property from you through what's called adverse possession. Adverse possession. You guys may have heard this. The slang term for this is squatter's rights. Someone moves into your property and eventually they can claim the ownership under certain conditions. Adverse possession. Now, there have to be five conditions that fall in place. And if you will notice when we go through these, these look very familiar, right? It has to be open. Everybody knows they're living there. It has to be hostile without the true owner's permission. 
has to be notorious. Everyone knows it's you doing it. It has to be continuous and uninterrupted. Right? Continuous can use this word tacking. Does this look familiar? These are the same requirements for that uh, easement that we talked about, where you can create an easement and you could use tacking. I could tack my two years of doing it on the back of your seven years to get to the required time and uninterrupted. And then the last one is adverse to the true owner's possession. A roommate can't be doing it in the house you're living in because you're living in it. All right. So this is open, hostile, notorious, adverse, and continuous and uninterrupted. It's the same five for the easement that we talked about or called a prescriptive easement that would create an easement across that farmer's land that we I drew earlier. Only this is actually taking ownership. I literally know a guy that did this. If you guys know where Perry Road is outside of the Metropolis Mall out near Plainfield, that road that comes out of the mall is called Perry. It has a stoplight there at Washington and Perry. The road bends around to a stop sign. Right at that bend was railroad tracks. The railroad company went out of business and they pulled the tracks up and just abandoned the property. The guy that owns the property next to it, his name was Joe Rankin. Joe had to mow the lawn. He had to keep it neat and clean because it was next to his strip center. After nine years, Joe went to the court and approached the judge and said, Your Honor, I want to take the ownership of this property. And the railroad company never even showed up to the hearing. And Joe produced all of this document of him, pictures of him mowing the lawn. He had uh, witnesses there saying, yes, I've seen Joe doing this. And the judge actually issued Joe a strip of land 900 feet long by 105 feet wide. We used to joke, what are you going to do, land airplanes on it? But he took it through adverse possession and then just annexed it onto his property. So he now has this other area that used to be a railroad track. That's typically how you see it done. You don't see it done like in a guy's house. Now, there are, I've seen stories of that where people are living in other people's houses. So it could happen. So this would be the fourth method. So you've got his cheat, you've got imminent domain, you've got foreclosure, and you've got adverse possession. All of these would be construed as involuntary alienation. All right. Thumbs up. Yay. Let's talk about one other way to convey property. We mentioned earlier the voluntary alienation, and I said you would do it while you're alive, or you could do it in a will that would still be considered voluntary since you wrote the will. So over on page 94, they talk about the transfer of a decedent's property. If a person dies with a will, They are said to die testate. And if you remember back, we talked about the land trust and we said there was one called a testamentary trust because it was created by a will. Testamentary comes from the root word testate. A person who dies and leaves a will will die what they call testate. As opposed to, this means with, someone who dies intestate means without a will. 
if you die intestate and no heirs, how does the you lose your property? That would be the escheat. You die with no will and no heirs to give it to, the state will take it. So if a person dies intestate, escheat could be on the table. So they can transfer this title in the will. A will is a legal document. So like everything else, it has to meet that sufficient age, middle capacity, has to have some value, it's for a legal act, all of those things that a contract would do. A person who writes the will, and I can never say this word without giggling a like schoolgirl, <coughs> is the testator. <laughs> not the real tater, not a potator, but a testator. That's the OR. He's the one that actually did it. Most states now want the will to be written by an attorney. They do not like what is called a holographic will. Holographic means handwritten. Nor do they like, I'm not saying it's not defendable, but they don't like what's called a non cupative will. That means oral. As a person's dying, oh, I want to leave this to my kids. That would be oral. They want it to be written by an attorney because that is the easiest way to defend it. Now, when a person dies, they have to open an estate and they have to go through a probate process. Probate is the legal validation of a will. Basically, think of it like this. They gather all of the toys that that person owned. They gather all of the debts that that person had. And then they sell all of the toys to pay off all of the debts. And anything that's left over would go to the heirs of the uh, whoever he left in the will or his heirs. It's a very simple concept. The process is a little harder, but the concept is very sound. Sell your two cars, sell your two houses, pay off the two mortgages and the loan on the car, and there's $100 left, that gets divided amongst the heirs. The person that would do this probate is called the executor of the will. That person will be named inside of the will giving them the power to do this. I am the executor of my mother's will, merely because I'm the oldest of the two boys. All right, so when my mother passes, it will be incumbent upon me to do all of the, okay, let's sell our house and pay the loan off. Do we, she have any other bills? Well. She owes somebody $10, okay, let's sell something to pay that $10. Whatever's left is going to be divided amongst my brother and I in some fashion. So the executor of the will is the person that's doing it. In the will, if they transfer real property, that real property is called a device. So that means the person that left it in the will is called the divisor. And the person receiving it, here we go, is called the devisee. And the stuff you put in your eyes is called devisine. <clears throat> I need to go get me one of those electronic <clears throat> Uh, drum roll so I can play, maybe play on my phone. Dun -dun -dun so a device is real property. If it's personal property, like your car, that is called bequeathed. I've heard people say bequest. 
heard my mom say, be quiet. I bequeathed my car to somebody. If it's cash, it's called a legacy. All of these words are in there. Now, on the bright side, there is no such thing as a bequestor and a bequestee or a legisor and a le It's just they use this with a device. The device or the divisor and the devisee is who you would name in your will as to getting my rental property. I'm going to use the rental property and in my will tr transfer it to some one of the kids. I would name him as the devisee of the property. If you have no will, it will go by order. Well, let's back up. The will is a legal document. You can change your will at will, means whatever. The legal term is a codicil. And there have been court cases before that we know of, most certainly the Anna Nicole Smith, where the old man changed his will to leave Anna Nicole Smith all of the money and the guy's son literally said, hey, wait a minute, that codicil, which is a legal document, when my father did that, he was not of sufficient mental capacity. He was on life support, respirators, pain pills, whatever. Therefore, his codicil is voidable, meaning I want it undone. I want to get it voided and canceled, which means it would revert back to the original will the father did, which left the boy all of the money. So you see a lot of this stuff in that. Same thing with the Simon case. When Simon died, he left money to his new wife. The boy came in and said, wait a minute, dad was on painkillers. His codicil wasn't valid. I want it undone, which leaves the money back to David Simon. Same exact court case. You literally can just take the names out. It's the same thing. Now, there is a state's dissent rule. It's called consanguinity. It's not in there. Doesn't matter. That means there is a rule or a pecking order on which your property goes to should you die without a will. Your spouse is number one. If you have children, then it's spouse and children. If you have children with no spouse anymore, your children would get it all. If you have a second spouse and first children, then it would be back to children and spouses. If you have a second spouse, first children, and second children, all hell breaks loose, all right? Because now you've got to start divvying it up. So there is an order to it. And in our state, that's the, the order. If you die, you have no parents living, no spouse living, no brothers and children. They would go like brothers and sisters then cousins and aunts and uncles. So there is an order and the state has done diligent efforts before I've seen them to try and find that person. And if they can't, what happens? If the person dies without a will and they can't find any of the heirs, the state takes it through as cheap. Cameron will give you credit for that one since you reach for the go button so Cameron gets credit for that that's where a cheat would come in <clears throat> if there are no errors they can't find any and the state of Indiana has I've seen several cases where they've actually tried you know it's not that they wouldn't want the real estate they literally have tried if they can't then they take it 